A massive thanks goes out to Be Quiet, Corsair, Eco Waterblocks, Inwin, and Sapphire for sponsoring our coverage at Computex 2019. Uh, we're here with Noctua now, and if there's one company that knows how to do air cooling, it's these guys. Our regular readers will know that we recently reviewed the NHU-12A and found that it was extremely competitive with uh, all-in-one liquid coolers that cost uh, substantially more. So these guys really do know what they're doing. And on that note, I'm joined by Daniel to talk about a few upcoming products uh, that are currently only in prototype stage, but uh, we'll, so we'll discuss what they're going to look like in the future. Uh, so Daniel, what have we got behind us? Uh, so this is our next generation 140 millimeter dual tower heatsink. It's based, it's based on the NHD15 that we yep. currently have. And that's the current flagship. Yes, exactly. So this is our largest mo model cooler, and this is just improving that even further. So what sort of improvements are we talking about? Uh, so first of all, we've increased the total number of heat pipes. So we've added one extra, so there's now seven instead of six. Okay. Uh, we've also increased the width of the top of the fin stack slightly. So this. Uh, has given us about 10% more surface area. Sure. And both of those just really help with that extra performance. Okay. And uh, so this will this will replace the, it won't replace the current flagship, it will no. sit alongside so it. We're, yeah, exactly. So we're going to keep the D15 in the lineup, okay. but we're going to have this option as well. Uh, and then, uh, so this is the, the mainstream platform mm -hmm. one. Yes. And then exactly. here we have a Threadripper one. So you guys, uh, this will be the, the new best cooling that you offer on Threadripper, right? Yes, exactly. So previously the U14S was the largest cooler we had for Threadripper, but this is going to um, boost that even further. Okay. Okay. And how have you enabled support for that? Uh, so the main difference between the, the two coolers in terms of the heat pipes is uh, on the original version, they spread out a little bit too far, which meant that we weren't able to get a Threadripper version because it would have completely blocked the RAM in Threadripper. Sure, okay. So with this version, we kept that in mind whilst designing it, and we've bent the heat pipes in a way where this is no longer a problem and it can clear the RAM just fine. Okay. And, and I understand that as well as having uh, two different versions, one for Threadripper, one for Mainstream, there's also going to be single and dual fan versions. Yes, exactly. So just like with our D15 at the moment, we have this, the, the S version and the dual fan version. It's going to be exactly the same with this. So there'll be four variations in total. In total, okay. And what sort of pricing and availability are we looking at for this new flagship? Uh, so they're going to be priced slightly above the current D15. So for the dual fan version, it'll be just over 100 USD, 100 euros. For the single fan version, it'll be in the 90s. Okay. Uh, now, I know you guys have got some demos running, including mm -hmm. a Threadripper one here. Yes, exactly. So what's going on with this demo? So this is basically just to give an idea of what the TR4 cooler can really do on a Threadripper um, setup. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, just under, well, actually, we're actually currently at 435 watts. So that gives you an idea of the kind of people we're really targeting at this. Um, the, the people who really want to push their system to the max, the extremist overcoupled. Yeah, of course. Uh, and this is with the 32 core yeah. Threadripper, right? Yes, exactly. Right, okay, cool. Uh, so while Noctua is very good at making quiet cooling effective, uh, the only way to get truly silent cooling is to have no moving parts at all. And on that note, Noctua has shown us that it's developing a new passive cooler. So Daniel, I wonder if you could talk us through a little bit of this design here. Yes, exactly. So this is something that's a little bit new for us. It's our first passive cooler designed for use with no fans at all. Okay. Uh, so we've updated the design a little bit for this. Um, so we've increased the thickness of the fins. We've also increased the distance between the fins. And this is really evidence of how we built this from the ground up with passive cooling in mind. I can also see that air, air appears to be able to get through kind of whichever way you look yes, at it. Yes, exactly. So we've tried to kind of expose it as much so to help with natural convection, which okay. this really relies on. Sure. Uh, and what sort of CPUs are you going to be able to cool with this? So any regular socket, obviously not TR4, but pretty much anything else this this will be able to. Uh, and I think on that note, there's a demo here. Yes. And this is a 9900K with a mild overclock, is that Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. I mean, in our test, we were seeing it about 3.8, but this is about 3.6 at the moment. Okay. Uh, about 120 watts in a completely fanless system. So the, the case is also completely fanless? Yes, so this is a quiet PC case. It has very good natural convection, which this cooler really needs if you want that kind of performance. Uh, but yes, in a, one, in a completely fanless case like this, you can still get a, a really good performance. What about a, a, a more normal case of you know, front to back airflow? Is that going to be suited to this kind of cooler? Uh, honestly, you do need one that's kind of designed for passive cooling. It you need something, together. Yeah, you need something with good natural convection if you want to see those kind of performance. OK, cool. And so what sort of release date are you looking at? Are you targeting around next year? or? So this one is probably going to be 
at least another year. Okay. It is still a prototype. There are likely things that are going to change, and we're looking into some different options. But it's something that we're getting good performance with at the moment. So, yeah, it's looking pretty positive, and hopefully next year. So oh, yeah, well, hopefully next year at Computex we'll see the yes, final version. Hopefully. Cool. All right, that wraps up Noctua. Thanks for taking us through that, Daniel. No and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. So with the with the previous model, they would have blocked the RAM because they moved too far Bro. out on the project back.